What's going on everybody? It's boy DC NBA here and today I'm back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the one of the only John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. So if you guys enjoy please make sure you like, comment, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss a video. Uh, the goal is to reach 5k by the end of the year. There's only one way we can do that and that is by uh, supporting out the channel so without further ado let's get right into this so yeah um guys john morant so far in the four games he's played he's been pretty good i'm not gonna lie um um he did just have an ankle injury and missed eight games um but yeah he returned he looked great looked like nothing really happened um he's still super athletic um you know and he still he caught this one lob that you know someone coming off an ankle injury you'd be like maybe you shouldn't do that but he did he didn't care um yeah he's a high flyer uh for sure and yeah let's kind of just get into it offensively um he's one of the best finishers at the point guard position for sure um he can basically do whatever to get into the paint and not really have a problem with that whether it's splitting splitting defenders on a pick and roll or just casually blowing past a big or um just you know beating his defender one on one in ISO. Um yeah he can just easily get to the rim. He's super athletic, um has a very good handle. He you know, he's very good at getting his getting into his spot which is near the rim and finishing as he's one of the best um finishers at the point guard position and he's only in his second year crazy to think about um but yeah one thing that i'm actually very surprised about and one thing that i really think is gonna continue to grow for him is that um so far this season he's only um averaging six attempts uh free throws attempts per game which honestly considering how much he gets in there i thought he'd be a lot more a lot higher um, but obviously with just more experience, you know, I expect that to go up and I, it's probably going to be at least 10 a game in his prime of his career for sure. There's no way this man is just going to like, um, top out at six because he's always in the paint, always drawing contact. So, you know, he's pretty good at, you know, inside the paint, getting contact. Um, his free throw percentage also is like pretty good, some like mid eighties that's great if he's going to be at the um be there so much um but yeah you just expect um that someone with such a small frame um wouldn't be you know as i don't want to say dominant but he wouldn't go to the paint as much as he does because he's he takes most of his shots like at the rim a good majority of his shots at the rim and considering that he is pretty small um in terms of you know, he's very light compared to everyone else. Uh, he doesn't need to put on some weight, that's for sure. But, you know, I think that'll come in a couple of years. Um, apparently, this offseason, he said he put on 12 pounds of muscle. Great to see. Continue to do that. It's going to be great. Um, so, the next thing I want to talk about is that John Morant, honestly, probably one of the better playmakers in the league. Like, top, at least top 15, for sure. Um... Considering what he's done as a rookie, what he did as a rookie last season, um, he averaged like seven. It was like seven point three assists per game, um, and he only had like three turnovers per game, which is pretty good, um, especially for a rookie point guard who led his offense. It's crazy. Um, the fact that him and Jaron Jackson Jr. were able to make this Memphis team so good after everyone expected them to be one of the worst teams in the league um that really just shows you the impact that he had on this team and what he could do um but yeah and especially with jaron jackson missing uh, like a decent amount of games that season you know for them to be fighting for a playoff spot was incredible to see um jaw definitely is uh, a very impactful player and i expect him to just continue to show that um, even, you know, his stats weren't, like, incredible. Like, they were really good for a rookie, but he only averaged, like, 17 and 7. And, you know, he was still one of the most impactful players on his team and in the Western Conference in general because 
no one thought they were going to do anything, make any noise, but they were in the playoffs um, before um, the season got shut down. So again, um, what you know, Jaw is pretty good, I would say. You know, he definitely um, raises your ceiling if you're the Grizzlies. You want to keep him. He is your franchise player. Obvious. Uh, another thing is, uh, Gerald is not perfect for sure. Uh, he's been struggling to shoot um, this season. It's only been four games, but he's shooting 25%. He went like, oh, the way he went 2 of 7 in the game, 0 of 3. Like, you know, he's obviously not a shooter. We know this. But last season, he attempted like 2.7 a game. And he only made 33.5%. It's below league average. It's good enough that defenders aren't going to sag off of you, but he's not going to win you a game with his shot. Um, but honestly, as his career goes on, I expect him to take more and make more. Um, I'm not really expecting him to be some incredible shooter like Seth Curry, but if he can just get around league average and take maybe like six attempts a game, that's all you really, all you can really ask for him. Uh, if he developed the pull-up shot, definitely could help out his offensive game. You know, add a little bit more versatility. Um, but yeah, you know, honestly, his mid-range percentages were okay. They're like 40-ish, which isn't like good. That's like decent. That's like average. Um, so you, you expect that. Um, he also has a good free throw percentage. So you expect that to develop into a three-point shot eventually. Um, and then also, um, on the other side of the ball defensively, he's actually been surprisingly good for his age and his height. He has a very, um, good defensive IQ. Um, he's 6'3 with a 7, oh, with a 6'3 wingspan. Oh, he's a 7 foot wingspan. Jesus. Um, but yeah, he's a 6'7 wingspan. Um, he's super athletic as we all know. So he honestly has the potential to guard, like, 1 through 3. Um, but again, yeah, he just needs to gain a little bit more weight so he can stay in front of defenders. Um, better and you know he does have a very good defensive IQ definitely um, can be one of the better defenders on his team um, he's not a liability like some really good uh, point guards like uh, Steph Curry who honestly has got, he's got a lot better I'm not gonna lie but he's definitely better defensively than Steph Curry is right now someone like Trey Young definitely better than him so that's for sure he's a very good perimeter defender obviously um, he's not going to be good in the paint. Makes sense. Um, he has a, um, the only problem is that sometimes on pick and rolls, he does get stuck on the screen and has to switch on the big man. Again, if he puts on some weight, probably can change. And, you know, yeah, we're done with that. And, um, lastly, um, I really like this, um, Grizzlies team as a whole. They have a lot of young talent, um, with players such as, um, Jaw, obviously, Brandon Clark, Grayson Allen, um, they've, they've looked pretty good this season. Um, the main problem, honestly, realistically, is going to be health of this team. Uh, mainly, the only person re realistically that you're worried about is Jaron Jackson Jr., who always seems to miss a good majority of games. Uh, but yeah, because what he missed, did he miss? I'm pretty sure he missed. Did he? I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure he missed, like, a bunch of time um, with I forget what injury but it was during the bubble he wasn't there he got injured and you know obviously that's not good for when they were in the playing tournament um, but yeah he spaces out the floor so well him and Jaw have such a good dynamic um, pick and pop pick and roll very good um, but yeah this um, Grizzly seems without both of them um, this season went four and four pretty good players like Dylan Brooks, Ty Jones, and Kyle Anderson really stepped off uh, uh, stepped up offensively for this team and they are already one of the best um, defenses in the league um, they have been for quite a while now and this is has been without Jaron Jackson Jr. who is one of the most versatile defenders in the league um, so yeah honestly I wouldn't be surprised to see Jaw and the rest of this um, Grizzly crew in the playoffs this season even in the loaded West, they have so much talent. Again, if Jaron Jackson stays healthy, I definitely believe that they can be in the playoffs. And honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised if John Morant made his first all-star selection. We got to see 
how he continues to play out this season, but I think um, big things are going to happen for him. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification bell. All of my links will be down in the description to my Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok if you guys want to go check those out. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.